Hello, DP Review TV. This is Don Kamarechka, back for a video to explore the gardens in my backyard in light that we can't see with our own eyes. It's going to reveal patterns in flowers in ultraviolet light that pollinators see. Stick with me. This is going to be fun. Today we're exploring some hidden patterns in flowers that insects and pollinators, some hummingbirds can also see, um, that are in ultraviolet light. The sun puts out a lot of light. It's a really hot summer day here. Um, not all of that light we can see with our own eyes, however. We see the visual spectrum, as we call it, um, but there's more on either sides of that, and some plants and insects have taken advantage of it. Uh, a lot of flowers will have hidden patterns within them that only insects or other pollinators, like certain birds, can see. Um, but we can photographically explore that if we jump through a couple of hoops. So here we have a, uh, a modified camera, a special lens that lets ultraviolet light pass through, and a very special type of filter that only lets ultraviolet light into the camera. Uh, a lot of technical equipment to get some fairly interesting results if you point it at the right subject. So here I've got just some random purple flower in my garden. Uh, please don't be mad at me for not knowing what this flower is called. And it has very strong lines that are fairly faded in our own visual spectrum. Some things are subtle like this. Some things are much more dramatic. For example, forget-me-nots, one of my favorite little flowers. Some of the flowers become incredibly bright white, others become incredibly dark, when to our own eyes, they're all the same shade of blue. Uh, similar uh, advanced patterns can be seen in irises to lead the insects into where the pollen is. Certain flowers, like sunflowers, will have a giant bullseye right in the middle that the insects can't miss. It's deliberately there to lead them in. The same thing is true of lily flowers. And I've got a nice yellow one here, at least it's yellow to our eyes, but things get quite a bit transformative when you see things in ultraviolet. Even something as simple as this weed, uh, kind of looks like a dandelion, not really sure what it is. It's all yellow to me. Um, but in ultraviolet, there's a bullseye pattern in the center of this to bring the bugs in. These daisies, on the other hand, while they look interesting to my eyes, they actually don't really do much at all in ultraviolet light. Some flowers are dramatic, others are almost nothing. It's a bit of a gamble to see what's going to work out the best here for you. It is a really hot day out here. Uh, so you should consider whenever you're out in the sun to wear sunscreen. It protects your skin from the damage of ultraviolet light. Um, and just to do a quick little example, I have a sheet of paper and I have some sunscreen. And so if the sunscreen does block the ultraviolet light, it would show up as white to our eyes, but it will show up as black when I put some of this on this piece of paper. So that is the magic of sunscreen that would normally be protecting your skin it's just this ugly mess on one camera, and it's maybe some sort of black and white artwork on the other. Thanks for coming on this little exploration with me as I look around this, I call it the universe at our feet, because there's just so much to explore that we can't see with our own eyes. Cameras can help us explore things in a way that we could never imagine. Um, we can't really see the world the way an insect does, but hopefully this gives you a little glimpse into what that world might be. Uh, please subscribe to this channel and uh, follow me on social media, on Instagram and on Twitter, uh, and get in touch. Let me know what you think about videos like this. There will be more to come. And one final thing for DP Review TV, um, what happens if we look at the world in infrared, the other side of the spectrum? Very ghostly, not a whole lot of much going on in nature, not many patterns to see, although a lot of insects do absorb infrared light, I guess to keep them warm. So on either ends of the spectrum, there's something of interest to see, and I love doing infrared landscape photography at the very least, not on a close-up scale, but there's so much to explore beyond the world that we see with our own eyes. Thanks again.